the career ladder then. So whereabouts do you think you are at the minute then? What? Yeah. No, no, they're not at the bottom. <laughs> you're one rung up, I'll give you that, <laughs> because you're on the ladder. <laughs> so the apprentice, it's a good job you know your place, you're there. And probably the next thing for you is just to aspire to be an electrician. That's it, you probably think that's it. But it doesn't ever stop there. There are loads of opportunities for you. After that, um, you can become a supervisor. So that's looking after you, possibly one other, probably an apprentice like you are now. Um, what do you think comes after that then? What's in your eyes comes after that one there? Site agent? Site agent? Yeah, I doubt, I doubt actually you're going to be a site agent. Site agent is normally someone who's looking after multiple trades. We tend to stick in electrotechnical sometimes moving to data and the like but we don't ever go over the building trades and stuff like that so you may want to you may want to do additional qualifications and move into that but generally we stay within the one don't we yeah um tester it's the nice clean guys that walk around just to meet you <laughs> on there get the best vans yeah <laughs> yeah always home on time yeah yeah they're the guys so yeah now how much do you think this guy gets here yeah, not a lot, I think is the answer there. Um, do you think the electrician gets more than the apprentice? Yeah. Do you think the supervisor gets more than the electrician? Yeah. And the tester, do you think they get more than the supervisor? Yeah. Why do you think that is? Why do you think they're getting paid more money? Sorry, more? Why you, well, qualifications come into it as well, but if you're testing something, you have to fill out a certificate, don't you? And you actually sign it, don't you? It's that responsibility factor as well that you're going to end up getting paid for. To make you are signing something to say that it's safe to either put into service or it's safe for continued use. You'll get that added responsibility will warrant more reward for it, and that's where you get the pay increases. And it doesn't finish there, Jake, does it? No, nope. it goes on then to the qualified supervisor again. He's checking what the checker's doing, so he's checking what the tester's doing, making sure, and putting his name to that of his final word and saying, yes, exactly, I'm happy with that. Now, this is the guy that we're interested in when we come round because he's the one that's signing all the work off. Yeah, so the qualified supervisor for the company, they are the people responsible for the technical content of what all the work being done by the organisation. So they are the ones technically responsible for 10 electricians maybe, that's that one person's responsibility to make sure what they churn out day in, day out is in line with the regulations and safe. That's their job. Anyone got any aspirations to be an owner of their own business? Who wants to be an owner of their own? Who wants to not work Mondays, have early Fridays? Right, well let me tell you now, you guys have got the hands up. What we tend to find is lots of people, we've got 37,000 registered companies with us, People like yourself start off and they do probably four years at college. They then after that, they're out there on the tools. They get a little bit of work and they get a little bit of private work here and then, then all of a sudden, you know what, I fancy this, I wanna go and make the big bucks. And that's it, they go. And they're out there, you're doing work for yourself. You're gonna move away probably from the comfort of someone else doing the quoting, someone else doing the, the ordering. You're gonna move away from that and start doing it. That bit, that's not too bad. But all of a sudden, you're gonna start probably come really good at what you're doing. So, as a consequence of being really good, you're gonna get bigger and better work. Before you know it, you'll be five years, maybe 10 years down the line, you've got probably five guys working for you, three vans out there. The only actual training you've had is electrotechnical training. Yet, you are the marketing director, the sales director, the finance director, the HR director, the health and safety advisor as well for your company. What you need to be aware of is there are lots of things out there that you need to be good at to be a good businessman and to own your own business. What this will set you up for going through your current studies is to be a good electrician. We hope everyone is really good at what they do but you really need to look at getting guidance or additional training wherever it is available, guys, because what we offer will get you there. It's what you do when you're there. It's a, it comes back down to that responsibility level that Darren was talking about. When you get to this top point, yes, all you guys are sitting there going, I want to be owner of my own business um, because that's where the, the money's at and where you're at the top of your game. But look at all this responsibility level you'll have underneath you. So it doesn't come without stress. 
<laughs> um, and it doesn't come without its problems. But if that's something you want to do, as Darren said, it's brilliant. make sure that you've got the correct training to do what you need to do. Yeah, there's lots of tools out there now that you can use and software for this and that and make the job easier. But it really is. You, you can be a fantastic out businessman out there. Um, but again, it's just about making sure you're, you're right and you've got the, the right level of understanding when you go out there and do it. It's not easy, I think we've got to say. It's not easy. But it is very, very rewarding mm. when you do it. Now, we've got these two guys uh, on the opposite side because they're more degree level, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, you don't have to stick with just one run all the way through. You don't have to say, that's it, that's my, my train, that's where I'm gonna be going. You could branch off if you want, and quite yeah. easily. I mean, normally you're gonna move on from what you're doing now, which is traditionally known as crafts courses. You'll move over into HNC or HND, maybe with an ONC in there to give you a bit of a bridging course on the math side of things. But you may want to do that, and that's absolutely fine. And some occupations in life still ask for those HNCs. If you want to go and work on the supply network with the DNOs, they will ask for a minimum of HNC. They'll also fund a lot of that as well. Yep. Um, so that may be somewhere where you want to consider moving on. If you're academic-led and your maths is quite good, you'll love that sort of thing. If you're a bit like me and you didn't like too much of the maths, um, then you'll do it, but it'll be, it'll be absolutely a grind, really is a grind, trying to get yourself through it and understand it and have to look through the books again. So yes, you, you, can, you can get yourself into that. It's, and again, that is really rewarding. Right, that's it from me and Jake until next time and we'll be popping in as much as we can really it's for us to say thank you very much for paying attention all the way throughout this we hope you found this interesting plus the questions and answers we always enjoy those anyway um, if you want to catch us we're still going to be minging around but until next time guys thank you very much and uh, thank you thank you brilliant